hear me okay? I would like to go ahead and get uh, this evening's program started for you, if I can get the volume controlled a little bit. Um, I'd like to thank you for joining us for the general session of the 73rd Annual TCCTA State Convention. We're excited to be in Frisco again, and I hope everyone has a wonderful time attending the sessions that are planned for the coming days, and I hope you'll have time to reach out to old friends, maybe make some new ones. I'd like to jump directly to introducing this year's theme so that the rest of this evening program will have it as their intellectual backdrop. This year's theme is entitled, Teaching at the Crossroads of Data and Creativity. My name is Bill Simsek, and I'm serving as the TCCTA president for this year. I've been in higher education at Lone Star College for 31, Lone Star Tomball, uh, for 31 years. In the 11 years prior to that, I was a student who completed an associate's degree at Wharton County Junior College, one of my alma maters, bachelor's and master's degree at Sam Houston State University, and my PhD degree, as well as postdoc studies in biomedicine at the University of Texas Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences at the MD Anderson Cancer Center. So between the 31 years in teaching and the 11 years in college, in other words, the 42 years in higher ed as a student, an administrator, and a faculty member, these years have convinced me that what happens in the classroom is often intangible, and frequently it's not quantitative, and therefore it is often overlooked for its importance. Even though I was academically trained to trust the quantifiable, what I've learned during the, during the past four plus decades is the importance of valuing the unmeasured. Yet the trend in higher education from the point of view of administration including College Board of Trustees, legislators, and even public opinion, is more focused on the measurable outcomes, such as enrollment, student success, graduation numbers, and using these numbers as benchmarks of success. And I admit that in light of the decreasing college budget dollars, the increasing student debt, and the data, that the data must be considered. And I acknowledge that the data can be valuable, if rightly interpreted. But the data is only one aspect of the crossroads in this journey to define higher education success. Meeting that data at the crossroads is the creativity and the qualitative nature of teaching and our expertise, not in our subject matter, but in finessing the daily interactions that we have with students to promote and encourage actual individual growth and enlightenment. Here, I would argue that successful faculty members go beyond pedagogical excellence and discipline expertise to embody compassion, respect, and patience. And I think most of us would agree that beyond a solid GPA and a graduation diploma, a truly successful student emerges from their experience in higher education, having developed tolerance, social and personal responsibility, cultural sensitivity, compassion beyond those that we personally know, and open-mindedness. If you've been a consistent reader of the TCCTA Messenger during the past decade, you know that I have, a long written, I have long written about the importance of the unmeasured aspects of what we do, and that I have advised caution about too much reliance on numbers and data. In December 2011 Messenger, I explored how excessive focus on the quantifiable metrics has impacted decision-making on college campuses, creating a penchant for top-down governance instead of shared governance. In September of 2012, I detailed how metrics and data were leading to the short-sighted elimination of the arts, languages, literature, theater, fine arts, music, and the classics in order to more fully fund the sciences because, as one university president said, the sciences would pay for themselves and provide the university with much needed economic stimulus. As evidence of the wrongheadedness of this statement, I hypothesized in the article that our world might be a very different, might be very different if great scientists of the past would have been denied the arts. Would Alexander Fleming have discovered penicillin if he hadn't been preparing materials for one of his microbe paintings? Uh, Alexander Fleming produced several pieces of artwork that um, used various strains of bacteria to, to produce the pigments. Also, would Albert Einstein have discovered the theory of relativity 
if he never played his beloved violin. And today I would like to add Jim Allison to that list, wondering if the 2019 Nobel laureate in medicine would have discovered a cure for some types of cancer had he not spent time in his band playing the harmonica and at times accompanying Willie Nelson on the stage. Next, in December 2014, I reviewed a book that I had read, The Dark Side of the Enlightenment. And in the review, I discussed the subtext of the Enlightenment period in England, which was that the coexistence of traditional science and alchemy led to some of the greatest discoveries of the Enlightenment. I noted that some of the greatest scientists of this period, such as Newton, Boyle, Locke, and Hooke, produced their historic discoveries because they combined the qualitative, artistic, and imaginative talents with their quantitative and analytical skills. Considering the overarching theme of these various messenger articles, you will not be surprised that for my, my year as TCCTA president that I chose as my theme, teaching at the crossroads of data and creativity. And as you likely noted, my three president's messages in the messenger were reminders to the readers that as educators, we are all fellow travelers at this intersection of creativity and data. And we have the responsibility to look both ways when entering the crosswalk. While some of us are firmly on the road of data-driven decisions, we must be alert and recognize that others of us are on a path equally committed to the unmeasured aspects of our profession. Although neither view is singularly complete, we must be wary that the current perception that data alone drives and describes what produces well-educated students in higher education is failing to bring us to our planned destination of true and complete student success. Later in the program tonight, our keynote speaker will further address this year's TCCTA theme, as will tomorrow's panel of speakers at the Adobe Luncheon. Now I'd like to turn our attention to remembering the colleagues who have passed away since we last met. The individual and collective loss to our profession is an unmeasurable loss, and we are diminished in their passing. So please join me for a moment of silence as we honor the memory of our colleagues and the contributions they made to their students and to our profession, as well as for many, to our personal lives. Please consider the words of Robert I. Gannon, Reverend Robert I. Gannon, President of Fordham University from 1936 to 1949. Central to TCCTA's being a leader in higher education is the state, in the state of Texas, is the synergy of the executive committee and the state office staff working in tandem with the committees and membership at large. On the executive committee, I've had the pleasure to work closely with our immediate past president, Dr. Mary Ellen Young. Mary Ellen, where are you? I saw you earlier. President-elect Linda Compte, right here up front, Vice President Dr. Stacy Stewie, I saw her in the back, Secretary Dr. Pa Patrick Gilbert, Patrick, in the back again, and Treasurer Renee Zuniga. Renee, over here. In addition to the wonderful people who work in our state office, <clears throat> The wonderful people in our, who work in our state office have made my year as president both meaningful and enjoyable. At every term, they have demonstrated kindness, intelligence, thoughtfulness, and tolerance to my academic ramblings. Specifically, I want to thank our executive director, Richard Moore, for his tireless patience in helping me codify this year's theme. Thanks also to Oscar Lugo for his diligent managing of the finances and the intricate paperwork associated with this convention and other activities of the state office. Katie Agnew Parr for her expert creation of events such as this wonderful convention tonight and in the next day and a half. And to Carol Hawkins, thank you for attempting to keep me to a word limit on my president messages. <clears throat> a noble but ultimately futile attempt. Of course, I want to thank Scott Nelson for his tireless and expert work on keeping up with the issues in higher education and curating the information on the TCCTA blog. And keep in mind that although all of these individuals have their own niche, none of them are confined by their positions. So whenever necessary, the entire office pitches in 
and gets the job done, and they do that job very well. A couple of years ago, TCCTA created the Faculty Fellows Program for faculty who are in their first few years of teaching. This program offers new faculty an opportunity to grow in their leadership, to meet colleagues from across the state, and to learn about important statewide issues affecting our profession. They've been meeting this afternoon with education leaders here at the convention and are with us tonight. If you are a TCCTA faculty fellow, would you please stand and would the rest of the audience join me in recognizing the dedication of our faculty fellows. Thank you very much. I want to recognize our sponsors as well. We'd like to thank OpenStax for being a leading sponsor of our 73rd annual convention. We also would like to thank the Association Members Benefits Advisors for sponsoring tonight's general session. And we want to thank Adobe for sponsoring tomorrow's luncheon and student success programs. Without the generous support of these partners, we could not put together, much less afford, an event such as this. Please join me in thanking these sponsored partners and be sure to stop by their booths in the exhibit hall. Each year at the state convention, TCCTA gives, away, gives out two scholarships. The first of these is a $500 scholarship donation that goes to the college that had the highest percentage increase of TCCTA membership this year. This money is donated to the college's general scholarship fund and given in the honor of the of, and given in the honor and name of the membership services committee who spearheaded the membership drive on their campus. This year, the $500 donation goes to Kent Hoffner in honor of McLennan Community College. The second scholarship. The Burnside Scholar Award is a $1,000 scholarship that was founded in 2002 and is named for Charles Burnside, the first executive director of the association. This award is given to a deserving student who attends the college of the current TCCTA president and is selected by that president. This year, I invited all of the faculty at Lone Star College Tomball to nominate students. And from those nominated, I selected a student who had academic need who had the tenacity to overcome major obstacles and who shows great academic potential. I'm very pleased to name this year's Burnside Scholar from Lone Star College Tomball, Shalina Sappington. <laughs> Although Shalina could not be here tonight, I want to tell you a little bit about her. Shalina Sappington is a 34-year-old mother of three who is in her second semester at Lone Star College Tomball. But Shalina's academic journey was not a direct one. Born into a home of drug and alcohol addiction, education was considered mostly irrelevant. And without family support of any kind, Shalina dropped out of high school. It's a testament to her character that despite lacking any kind of financial or emotional support, that she was able to make a life for herself. She married and had three children, but her life took a very abrupt and unexpected turn in spring of 2019 when her 13-year-old son asked her where she went to college. That simple question triggered feelings that she would never forget and roused a longing within her to pursue the education that she had been denied, to be a role model to her children and to pursue a career that she had hoped for. The impact of that one question from her 13-year-old son led Shalina to obtain her GED in three months to enroll in Lone Star College Tomball in the fall of 2019 and to complete that first semester with a 4.0. Currently, she's taking a full load of pharmacology, statistics, psychology, and philosophy. She's already passed the HESI exam and plans to apply for the accelerated nursing program in the fall of 2020 and then complete her Bachelor of Science in Nursing with the ultimate goal to work as a registered nurse with a focus on helping those struggling through detox and addiction recovery. Congratulations to Shalina Sappington. And best wishes for her future success. Now I'd like to introduce Annie Johnson Benefield, also of Lone Star College Tomball, who as chair of the nominating committee will announce the slate of candidates for state office this year. 
Any? Good evening, everybody. I would like to announce the slate of candidates for this year. The nominating committee met. Those are the names of the members of the nominating committee. And we unanimously accepted the nominations for these individuals. Uh, can't see it from here. Uh, I can't see it from here. <laughs> Isn't there a sheet of paper with it on? <laughs> I wanted to see if she could bring it. He took the paper. <laughs> I'm good, but I'm not that good. <laughs> um, I want to thank all the members of the nominating committee. We met last November and selected the following individuals as candidates for state office. Please stand as I call your name. President-elect, Dr. Stacy Thorne Stewie. Tarrant County College Northeast. <laughs> For Vice President, Mr. Patrick Gilbert, Longstar College, Tumball. <laughs> um, Secretary, Mr. Renee Singer, South Texas College. Zonica, is that right? I apologize profusely if I mispronounced your name. Treasurer, Miss Missy Patterson, Austin Community College. Thank you to these individuals for their dedication and service to TCCTA. I hope most of you have already voted online, but if you haven't voted yet, please vote tomorrow. The election will be held in the exhibit hall Thank you so very, very much. Give a round of applause for our nominees who's going to take TCTA to the next level. Thank you, Annie, for leaving me the rest of the script. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Benefield. I also want to thank the candidates for their willingness to step up and offer their leadership to TCCTA. This year, we also wanted to highlight the recipient of the American Association of Adjunct Ed Educators Award. Allow me to introduce AAAE's president, Dr. Brenda Melanson, who will announce the winner of this award. Good evening. She is a veteran teacher with Aldean ISD with 32 years of experience. 27 of those years have been spent in special education in various capacities. She currently serves as a dyslexia specialist. She has received the Aldean ISD Extra Miler Award five times. She has served as an adjunct professor at Lone Star College System for five years. She earned a BA from Sam Houston State University, a master's from Stephen F. Austin University in education with emphasis in educational administration. She received her PhD from Texas A&M University College Station in curriculum and instruction. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our adjunct of the year, Dr. Ruth Ann Ryder. Excuse me, Ennis. Dr. Ennis, I'm sorry.
Um, our, her plaque reads, Adjunct of the Year Award, presented to Dr. Ruth Ennis for outstanding educational achievements and commitment to student success. The American Association of Adjunct Education 2020, given this 27th day of February, 2020. Thank you so much. Thank you both very much. Before I introduce the keynote speaker, I'd like to take a quick minute to remind you <clears throat> that every year TCCTA provides its memberships with four outstanding professional development opportunities. The Great Teaching Roundup is May 18th to the 21st this year in Kerrville at the Y.O. Ranch Hotel. This event is a gathering of community college teachers who meet to share ideas inspire each other and reconnect with what led them into this profession in the first place. If you haven't attended the Roundup before, I strongly encourage you to. You can check at the registration area in the morning for more information or visit the TCCTA website under the Events tab. The Leading from the Middle Conference is a program for mid-level administrators and takes place July 12th to the 14th at the Minger Hotel in San Antonio. Basically, this is a boot camp for deans, division chairs, IT directors, student success directors, librarians, and professional development coordinators. This conference provides information and insights to help administrators succeed in their positions. TCCTA has been hosting the Faculty Leaders Conference, which will occur in September of this year, I believe. Um, it's been hosting this conference for over 30 years, and it's a great chance for faculty to receive briefings that provide a statewide perspective on things affecting our profession. Topics include instructional concerns, such as student success initiatives, dual credit, guided pathways, co-requisites, as well as legal, legislative, as well as retirement issues. The annual convention, which I believe most of you know about, will take a, um, I think it'll be good if you're able to take a few minutes to look through the program at the more than 150 sessions that will be held over the next day and a half. There's so much to choose from, some amazing section meetings, gifts, the great ideas for teaching students, and student success breakouts are just a few. I also hope that you'll look through the program and pick at least one session for a discipline that is not your own as a great way to discover new perspectives. I would call your attention to one very special event tomorrow Please make it a point to attend the Adobe Student Success Luncheon at 1245. Not only will Justin Hodgson be presenting a discussion on how to empower students through creative technologies, but there will also be an amazing panel discussion that will explore this year's TCCTA theme. The panel will include Ray Anderson, Chief Strategist for Ascension Hospitals, Ross Ramsey, the Executive Editor of the Texas Tribune, Carlos Martinez, the Faculty Council President of Richland College, and Jackie Thomas, the Director of Strategy at Lone Star College Tomball. I hope to see you there. Throughout the summer and fall of 2019, I contemplated this year's topic and its complexities. As Richard and I explored the many facets of the topic and talked about someone who could speak tonight, who had the experience to explore the topic in a meaningful way, we discussed potential speakers who might have contemplated the limits of the measurements and the data that we use in higher education and its influence on the art of teaching. We discussed faculty, administrators, legislators, lobbyists, heads of philanthropic organizations and attorneys in higher education, but had difficulty finding the right fit. Then one day while I was talking with Richard about the difficulty of finding the right speaker, it occurred to me that I was probably already talking to one of the most experienced people with this topic, Richard Moore. Although I had to twist his arm a bit, he, was gracious, he graciously agreed to give tonight's keynote. Richard has been the executive director of Texas Community College Teachers Association for 29 years. During that time, he has worked closely with thousands of educators across Texas. As director, he also works closely on statewide education policy issues and the intersection of data and crea creativity, which to me is the heart of the true art of teaching. He has been at the center of this work with TCCTA for at least for the last three decades. 
He truly understands the essential roles of good data and of dedicated, talented, and creative educators and how the two can meld to benefit students and society. Please join me in welcoming Richard Moore to the podium.